Max Immelmann, Night of the Air. German troops and air crew who staffed the airfield at Rethel in France rushed from their quarters one wet day in April 1915 when a sentry shouted that a French biplane was coming to land. The Germans were standing on the field gazing in astonishment at the approaching aircraft when someone shouted, Down everyone, he may come in shooting. In an instant all the Germans except one dropped to the ground. The exception was a dandified pilot in a second lieutenant's uniform who preferred to stand rather than grovel in the mud. When another officer bellowed, Get down, you idiot! The pilot looked down distastefully at the slush already soiling his gleaming boots and shook his head. Even an enemy strafing attack was not going to make him ruin his uniform with mud. Actually, the Germans had nothing to fear. The enemy soon proved to be two French airmen who had mistaken the field for their own. They stepped sheepishly from their plane with arms upraised in surrender, and only the officer who had remained standing was presentable enough to give them a proper greeting. Leading them to the mess for a drink, he offered the sympathy of the gentlemen for their rotten bad luck and introduced himself as Second Lieutenant Max Immelmann. Such an incident was typical both of Immelmann, Germany's first air ace and one of her most popular World War I heroes, and that early period of the air war when pilots of both sides acted like chivalrous knights. Pint-sized, with piercing eyes and inquiring mind and more imagination than most pilots, Immelmann was one of the great pioneers of aerial warfare. Young Max was a genius at aerobatics and was the first to use the sun as an aid in combat. He also devised the famous and deadly aerial manoeuvre known as the Immelmann Turn and introduced formation flying. He was born in Dresden on September 21, 1890, the eldest son of a woman who was widowed soon after the birth of her third child. Frau Immelmann was a fanatic about diet and natural food. As a result of this training, Max never touched meat, tobacco or alcohol. Although the boy had a genius for mechanics, family connections decided on an army career, and at 15 he entered the Dresden Cadet School. Strong, athletic and a champion gymnast, young Immelmann was a paragon of virtue and an exceptional student. At 20, he graduated as a second lieutenant in the German army. He dutifully stuck to a dull desk job in the railway corps for several years, but immediately applied for enlistment in the German Air Force when World War I erupted. Accepted on November 12, 1914, he was sent to a flying school at Adlershof, and there it soon became apparent he knew far more about aeroplane engines than his instructors. Also because he had a natural instinct for the job, he was flying solo by January 15, 1915, and on February 9th passed his pilot's test. A few days later, while landing an LVG training plane, he failed to spot a heap of manure someone had left on the runway. The plane landed upside down in a tangle of wreckage. Unhurt, except for wounded pride, Immelman moaned, just 130 perfect flights and I'm shot down by a pile of dung. On April 12, 1915, Second Lieutenant Immelman was posted to flying Section 62 at Rethel under the command of Captain Emil Kastner. Section 62 was an unglamorous unit equipped with the lumbering LVG biplanes, which were used for reconnaissance and observation missions over enemy territory. Although French planes then had machine guns, it was not until mid-1915 that the Germans began fitting light air-cooled machine guns to their own aircraft. When Immelmann first got to the front at Rethel, the German pilots were taking photographer observers over enemy territory in unarmed planes. All the Germans had for defence against the French machine guns and anti-aircraft gunners were revolvers and rifles which were carried by the air crews. Because of this inadequate firepower, Immelmann had to follow the other pilot's example and steer clear of enemy planes. Then on June 2nd, when on a photographic mission above Arras, the young German ran straight into a French farmer equipped with a machine gun. Deciding to bluff his way out of trouble, he gave his LVG full throttle and barreled straight at the enemy. The Frenchman panicked and ran for home. The next day Immelmann met another farman which came in above him as his observer, Lieutenant von Turban, was photographing enemy gun emplacements. 
The Frenchman let go a burst which riddled the LVG's right wing. Immelman glanced back at Von Turbot, who shook his head indicated he had not finished his work and kept on clicking his camera. So the helpless German plane doggedly stayed on course while the Frenchman continued zooming and blasting the target with heavy fire. At last, looking up from his camera, Von Turban gave a nod. Wasting no time now, Immelman dived out of the farmer's range and headed for Rethel. He landed safely, despite his aircraft looking like a colander. For that adventure, he and his photographer were later presented with the Iron Cross Second Class. A few days later, Section 62 was transferred to the airfield at Douai. Immelman was one of those selected to take over a fighter-type LVG equipped with a machine gun. Now he could hit back. He could also do some hunting himself. The second time the German went up in the new fighter, a straight-shooting Frenchman put a bullet through his petrol tank. Immelman had to make a hasty landing in a cornfield. Several times after that, he sighted French planes, but he marked up no kills, for usually after brief dogfights, the enemy retreated across their own lines. Max Immelman, by then promoted to lieutenant, still had not opened his score of kills. Then in July, two brand new Fokker fighters arrived at Douai. The machines, which were equipped with a parabellum machine gun synchronised to fire through the propeller blades, were allotted to Immelman and his friend Lieutenant Oswald Bolker. Just before dawn on August 1st, ten French bombers attacked Douai Aerodrome. The raid was still going on when the two new Fokkers took off after them. While Bolker engaged two of the bombers in a running fight at 8,000 feet, Immelman got a two-seater biplane squarely in his sights. His machine gun got off a burst but then jammed. Calmly he flew no hands for the next few minutes while he struggled to free the gun mechanism. Nor did the fact that the two French fighters kept blasting at him with everything they had make his task any easier. Finally, when his gun was free, he wheeled his Fokker after one of the Frenchmen. The French aircraft could not match the Fokker's manoeuvrability, and Immelman soon pounced on it from above, his machine gun pouring in long bursts at point-blank range. Almost completely wrecked, the French plane began a steep glide earthwards, with the German riding its tail and emptying the last of his ammunition belt into it. Once the enemy managed a bumpy landing in a field, Immelman set his Fokker down nearby, he ran over to find the pilot still trying to struggle from the cockpit with a shattered arm. Immelman helped the Frenchman to a patch of grass, laid him down and bandaged the wounded arm. Then the German troops came running to take the French pilot prisoner. Immelman flew back to Douai, where later he was to receive the Iron Cross First Class. After that his score mounted steadily. By October 1915, he had shot down five victims and also perfected the now famous Immelman roll. The roll was an air manoeuvre in which he reared his Fokker up as if to loop, but instead turned or rolled sideways over the vertical and came out in the opposite direction. The result gave the aircraft extra height and changed its direction at the same time. Immelman's chief tactic was now to lurk high above the German lines and pounce on French and British aircraft on their way to photograph installations. Although his score of victories was small by later standards, Immelman was catapulted to national fame. Throughout the fatherland, he was hailed as Germany's first air hero. And it was Max Immelman who was chosen to fly over Paris and drop an impudent note warning the population that the German army would soon be at its gates and exhorting them to surrender. After his eighth victory, he was awarded the Pouli Marit, Germany's highest award for bravery. By March 30th, 1916, when his score had mounted to 13, he was given a new Fokker equipped with two machine guns and a 160 horsepower Oberusel rotary engine, which, however, soon proved a doubtful asset. On April 14th, over Monchi, Immelman got his 14th victim. His 15th, a Bristol single-seater, was shot down west of Douai on May 16th. Then on May 30th came near disaster when, with two supporters, he attacked seven Vickers bombers heading toward German-held Bapalm. Seeing the Fokkers, the English planes swerved back towards their own lines. Immelman took off after them. Suddenly his plane began convulsive bucking and jolting. The heavy 14-cylinder engine was tearing itself free from its mountings. 
Although the plane nosed over into a dive, Immelman was able to level off at about 1,500 feet and make a forced landing. When he climbed down from the cockpit, he saw the engine was held only by two frail struts. Soon he was given command of his own staffel, or squadron, of Fokker fighters. On June 18th, he shot down his 16th and last victim. That evening, he went up again with three other Fokkers to tangle with some British fighters. He did not return to base. Next day, he was found dead in his crashed machine. Controversy raged over the manner in which he had met his end. The official verdict was that the engine had again come loose. But the manufacturer, Anthony Fokker, denied this after examining the wreckage. He claimed the German anti-aircraft fire directed at the British planes had caught the ace. The third version was that he had been shot down by the South African Lieutenant G.S. McCubbin.